Using our scattergram, we have identified our competitive base price and kind of identified a price range. Now it's time to really find the competition that we're going to be going against and how we match up against the, the buyer's eyes, if you will, when they're looking in the, the broad area for homes that fit into that. So let's go into how to do that positioning search to make sure you get the right information so you can really position accurately. When we looked at the pricing MLS search, what I said before was we're going to look for the right data for the visual pricing system to do its job and find the right patterns versus what kind of makes sense to search for. When it comes to positioning, we're going to do the exact same thing. Now, in this case, we're not going to be searching for a subdivision, but we're going to be searching for data in a price range. We want to be looking at competition that we are going to want to price against, and our buyers are probably going to be looking in a certain range that would find other homes much like ours, that are in a certain price area. Now, in order to find that, the general rule is you take your comparative base price that you found in the scattergram, go up 5% and go down 5%, and then adjust to be on a bridge. Now, what do I mean by a bridge? A bridge is a price that kind of makes sense when you think about a buyer and how they're searching in the MLS. There's very few people out there that are probably going to be searching for any kind of you know number that ends in 300. For example, if you're, if you're thinking about a $247,300 price on the top end of this 5% increase, we want to round that up to $250,000 because most people will be searching by that number. So once we have this price range from the bottom bridge to the top bridge, we are going to then search our area for other competition that kind of falls in that. Now most of the time, that will just be citywide. You can just go ahead and type your city in there and that's how we're going to define the area of competition we're going to be going against. Because in most cases, that's where buyers will be looking. Now, that being said, a lot of times, though, there are options to zoom in and kind of pick an area of the city. This can happen if there are certain regions of your city that have very distinguishing factors that affect their pricing. For example, if you happen to have beachfront homes and the areas next to the beach are obviously going to be more expensive, we want to make sure that if we're selling a home near the beach, we are competing against those properties. We're not trying to position against a property that's miles and miles away. If you have, you know, homes next to the mountains or areas in a special tax district or next to like an old town or like the downtown area, you're probably going to want to zoom in on that. Now, other than zooming in, you can also zoom out. If your property has unique features that are kind of rare in your city, a lot of times your buyers will probably look outside city limits and in, inside the same county for other properties that are like that. But in most cases, we're just gonna look in the city. Now that we've established the price range and the area, now we move on to the status. Now, even though we're only positioning against active properties, those that are for sale and under contract, we actually wanna include all status conditions. The reason we do this is so that the visual pricing system can work and crunch the numbers and give good predictions and create good patterns of future competition which it needs sold and withdrawn and expired information for. So once we've done all this search and kind of put all this together in the MLS, we're going to go ahead and export it so that we can load it in and get to positioning.